Thanks. Good evening and welcome to the January 10th, 2000. This is the first meeting of the new century. Um, no, it isn't. Thank you very much, those of you who are here on this windy, rainy night. May I have a roll call, please? Chairman Carson? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Roberts? Present. Councilor Swift Kayata? Here. Councilor Watson? Here. Representative Bowles? Here. Here. I don't know which one is best. <laughs> Thank you. Short musical interlude. Here we have the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a very special presentation tonight from the Fort William Centennial Committee. Is it Jeff Van Fleet and is it Betty Crane as well? Or just one of you? Just one. It's okay, Jeff. One is good. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask how I became so honored to be the third item on the agenda tonight. On a, on a night like this, I'm, I'm very <laughs> thankful. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Jeff Van Fleet. I live at 18 Ocean View Road here in town. And I'm a member of the Fort William Centennial Celebration Committee uh, and also chairman of its fundraising subcommittee. I'm actually here tonight as a stand-in for Al Barthelman, who had a prior engagement. Uh, two years ago, uh, the centennial planning began, and it all culminated this spring and summer in a series of concerts, uh, in the opening reception on April 13th, and on Celebration Day the July, on July 24th. And I, I can't help but emphasize that all of this happened with the help of over 200 volunteers in town. In addition to the one-time festivities, uh, permanent improvements were accomplished at the park, uh, notably the 12 historic uh, bronze markers that are now in place, the new front sign, and the centerpiece, centerpiece of the celebration, which uh, is the permanent memorial at Battery Blair. Paying for the celebration was the responsibility of the fundraising subcommittee whose members included, and I don't want to miss anyone, Al Barthelman, Clint Blood, Lois Carlson, Penny Carson, Dan Davidson, Paul Phillips, and yours truly. This committee and its solicitors raised funds from 60 businesses and foundations, as well as from 300 individuals. In addition to cash, many businesses donated, donated in-kind uh, goods and services for a total uh, number of contributors uh, exceeding 400. I can't talk about fundraising without also thanking Mike McGovern and especially Barbara Ray who kept track of all the contributions and prepared the thank you notes. It was a tough job, uh, a laborious one, <laughs> putting up with my phone calls on a regular basis. I can't thank Barbara and Mike enough for, for their help in this project. I'm delighted now to report that revenue from all sources uh, for the centennial exceeded expenditures. And as we promised our donors that if that were the case, we would put excess funds into the Fort Williams Park Trust uh, to benefit the park for future generations. Uh, that's what brings me here tonight. Uh, it also uh, allows us to fulfill one of the goals of the centennial celebration, which was to have it be a springboard for enthusiasm and funding into the future. So without uh, further delay at this time, I would like to present on behalf of the Fort Williams Centennial Celebration Committee a check, I should say a symbolic check, in the amount of $12,093.04 to the town of Cape Elizabeth for deposit to the Fort Williams Park Trust. Wow. Thank you, Jeff. You're Thank welcome. I just have one thing to say to the listening audience and to the council and the audience here is that over the years I have worked on probably 10 major uh, fundraising campaigns 
and never have I met anyone who worked with such diligence as Jeff Van Fleet. If every fundraiser had somebody like Jeff following up, making the phone calls, going out, visiting the people, there'd be no problem raising money. It was a difficult task, and you did it. And I want everyone to know that everybody worked hard, but you stayed with it, Jeff. And I was very impressive. Okay. And I would like to thank, thank you on behalf of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. I think that there are many people who've always dreamed that there would be a foundation to support the fort. And this is a great beginning, and I thank you very much. Hold the check up so the camera can see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I wonder the way that Centennial Bank and Trust is. <laughs> Great. I thank you very much, Jeff. Hmm. Other reports and correspondence. Yeah, Madam Chairman. Uh, well, go ahead. Left to right, right. Are you? Oh, uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> Sorry, Henry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to bring to the attention of everyone that um, the National Soccer Coaches Association of America has recognized the girls' soccer team coached by Charlie um, Carroll. Carroll. Charlie Carroll. Thank you, Penny. Um, for academic award to be. Um, for them to receive later this week in Baltimore. And I think we need to, um, I want to thank them, commend Charlie and the whole soccer team for their performance, not only on the field, but also in the field of ac academics. So I just wanted that to, br to bring that to everyone's attention. Thank you. I have uh, sort of an unofficial report, I guess. I'd like to comment that the uh, work at the Public Works garage and the fields facility is probably way ahead of schedule for those of you that go out there and walk occasionally. So. Hopefully this coming year, uh, Public Works will be able to move into that and we won't be faced with the delays that we have been with some of the other projects. Uh, I say that with a bit of uh, regret. I have been unable to do any cross-country skiing, but because, <laughs> but because of that, they are moving right along and it looks good. You ought to take a look at it if you get a chance. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chairman, I have two things. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, which will be the 11th, uh, there will be a meeting of the um, uh, Cape Elizabeth Historic uh, Preservation Study Committee here at the Town Hall. And my second point, I received a, a telephone call a couple of weeks ago from uh, <clears throat> a member of the WET team. And uh, I think most of us who uh, think of the WET team think of the ocean and uh, rescuing people from the ocean. But there are a dozen ponds or so uh, in the town of Cape Elizabeth. And uh, Steve Jordan and uh, uh, Tim Strout and the members of the wet team went around to all of these ponds and it was a, a good idea and I think they should be commended for it. They put lifesavers on a, a post right by all of these ponds in case anybody falls in because you can drown in a pond as well as you can in the ocean. And it was their idea that came up with it and so I wanted to mention it and uh, let the people know that uh, the, the wet team has taken it upon themselves and done this great thing for the town on these ponds. Thank you. That yep. is a great idea. Mm. Any other reports and correspondence? <clears throat> uh, town manager's report. Yes. Uh, I'd like to follow up first on something Councillor Roberts mentioned and then uh, continue on and just uh, update everyone on the swimming pool project. Uh, the Gull Crest Road, the Gull Crest project, which involves the new public works garage and the ball field, is now under construction. I went for a walk there over the weekend, and you know, other than in the immediate construction site, I would really, you know, as long as the ground stays bare, really encourage folks to walk onto that property and see it. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of land, and uh, particularly with the way this winter has been, it's just a great place to to wander about. So as long as folks stay out of the immediate construction site, it's a great place to go. The best access point to that uh, is right at the entry road to the former Le Levitt Farm, if you pulled over to the side there, or in the times when the refuse disposal area, you could put your car over there somewhere as long as it's out of the way and people can figure out what's out of the way on their own. Uh, second thing I wanted to just <laughs> update everyone on the swimming pool project. Uh, very pleased to report that things look a little bit better on Monday night than they did on Thursday morning of last week. Uh, we did have a problem, as, as indicated in the email to the council, uh, with something called a heat exchanger. It's, uh, it's a major piece of, of the uh, piping system 
of the pool, and it was one of those things that economically we were trying to use from the old pool, and it was a, it was a bad mistake. Uh, it was not something that should have been used. Uh, it uh, ended up uh, when they fired up the big unit for heating the, the water, uh, the heat exchanger failed, and the boiler water, which had been in the school's boilers for who knows how many years, 15 years, 20 years, decided to back itself up into the swimming pool. Uh, therefore, that water got copper in it and who knows what else, and we did have a test done on it. But uh, even though they were very small parts per million, we were still concerned that a new facility, we, we didn't want to have any problem at all. Uh, so anyway, we drained all of the water out of the pool, had it drained. Uh, and the water is just about filled up again. Uh, there's a new heat exchanger that was being installed today, and we do expect it, the whole project to be done uh, at the end of this week. Uh, it has been a problem, uh, it has been a concern. There was also an issue, some of you might have heard, with some caulking around the pool uh, at the edge of where the metal hits the, uh, the tile. Uh, that was all fixed uh, over the last couple of days and is in repair once again. And uh, the curing period of that was not as long as we were first told. So it appears that the pool will be ready, as well as the fitness center, uh, for the original times that uh, the community services uh, uh, booklet that's out now indicates, So, uh, which would mean the fitness center opening sometime next week and the pool being available for all the programs the week after, and probably the swim team's probably getting in there before then. There will also be a dedication uh, of the pool, uh, the Donald Richards Community Pool, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, February 6th. I believe it's from 2 to 4. I, I need to check that time, but it will be community services as, as the new pool director and the fitness center manager are putting together the plans for it. Uh, Chairman Carson's also been involved, and obviously the council will receive written invitations to that. The pool building committee, which did such an exceptional job, as well as everyone in town is invited as well. And they're looking at planning some diving demonstrations and some other odds and ends, as well as gen tours, and I'm, I'm not familiar with the full details, it's still being worked out, but everyone's invited to that, and it's, it's a beautiful facility, and uh, I'm sh very, very pleased that it's almost done. I bet. Thank you. <laughs> How long did it take to empty the pool? How long does it take to do that? The difficulty is, is that there's a, a very small piece at the bottom of the pool that cannot be emptied by gravity, and you need to pump it out. And we ended up, the fire department, uh, Jimmy Murray, uh, Jerry Murray, <laughs> and the fire chief and a couple other folks were in and out had to drain that last two to three feet so we're going to be buying some pumps so we don't have to call the fire department to do that <laughs> take about uh, two days is that well, it takes a good two days 190,000 gallons of water <laughs> takes about two days to empty and about two days to fill give or take it takes a little bit more to uh, empty it because of the, the right. need to get that last bit of water up but it's 190,000 gallons as a result of this heat exchanger that that flushed down the uh, system so That'll be a kind of trivia question. Disappointing. In a future quiz. Yes. Madam Chair, I had a question for the <laughs> <Yes>. town manager. <laughs> I received in the mail, I presume everybody else did, this easement from the... Mm -hmm. um, it's fine with me, but where is it? Just out of curiosity, where is it? It gives the, uh, you know, the registry book number, but it doesn't say exactly where it is. Yeah. Th that's... I hope that the council might consider taking out of order. You can see it just arrived the end of last week. That is to bring the power to the new public works garage. And a, there's, the reason there's two separate deeds is one of it is on the, the deed of the original uh, dump land, and the other portion is on the, the land of uh, the, uh, the Gullcrest. That's the reason for the two separate, two separate parcels of land. Okay. Okay, fine. Citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Are there any citizens that have items that are not on the agenda they'd like to discuss? Hearing none, we will move on. Before I move on to the next items, um, I, I hope most of you probably had heard that Peter Feeney, who is the commission, the county commissioner for and represents the town of Cape Elizabeth, passed away recently, and it's appropriate for, for us to have a moment of silence in his memory. Thank you very much. May I have the minutes, please, um, of the December 13th meeting? I, did I see that there is a collection here? Is this? The, what is this? Yeah, is that my deal? No, that's that something this? else. It's something else. It's just a letter you got today. What's this? Oh, to be entered into the minutes. Okay, sorry. 
right. Madam Chairman, I'll move that the minutes be accepted. Second. As Second. read. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, any errors or omissions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Thank you, that carries. Item number 66, consideration of request from Council Roberts to consider item number 60 at the, dis reconsider item number 60 from the December 13, 1999 Town Council meeting relating to proposed revisions of the sewer rate schedule. In order to bring this up for reconsideration, Councilor Roberts was on the prevailing side of the vote and is brought up at the next regular meeting, which is this one, which is appropriate. Councilor Roberts. Madam Chairwoman, I would move that we reconsider uh, item number 60, which was voted on at the December 13, 1999 meeting. I will second the motion, Madam Chairman. Is there any discussion on this part of the you motion? We're going to take a vote second. to reconsider. We're voting to reconsider only. Hearing none, let's call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? None, thank you. No, All right. That's another motion. <laughs> yes. Madam Chairwoman, I would now like to um, make a couple of comments, I guess, before I make a, another motion. But mm -hmm. I had uh, spoken with one of the uh, landlords in town, indicated that I might be willing to try to uh, divorce the residential meter rates from the rest of the package. Uh, there was not a great deal of enthusiasm but for separating it out, and I have spoken with him. So what I am going to do is move to table to uh, a workshop session and give our assurance that it will not die there. So I would, at this point, move to table uh, this item. Could we use the word refer in your motion to refer to a... To a I'm sorry, yes, that yeah. would be fine. Yeah. I'll second I'll that. second. All right, go ahead. It's been moved and seconded to refer oh the, the <clears throat> discussion on the sewer rate schedule to a future workshop in the very near future, as soon as we can get it scheduled. Uh, and moved and seconded. Is there any more discussion on that? All those in favor? Opposed? None? Motion carries. I think that that's... Uh, I've been talking on and off with everybody, most everybody, all day on this. I think that that's a very wise discussion. It's a very complicated issue, and um, it's been, uh, you know, around since last April, I guess, in, in, on the immediate discussion level, and certainly was on many years, over the years, several times. But it is a complicated issue and involves a lot of things in this community, and I think it's appropriate that the council have the opportunity to discuss this and debate these issues in a workshop. And uh, I'd like to assure the Davises that we'll make every effort to get onto it as soon as possible. Um, thank you very much for your patience. Item number 67, consider acknowledging receipt of the capital improvement plan for the fiscal year 2001 to 2005. I'll move to accept the uh, uh, capital report. improvement report. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we accept the report of the capital improvement plan at this time? Any more discussion? Did the, did the town manager want to make any comment on this at all? Just Unless you'd like me. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> Hearing no more discussion, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. This is my kind of meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 68. I've also changed a word in this, but it's consideration of receiving and tabling a proposed debt management policy for the town of Cape Elizabeth. I would encourage the council on this not only to accept, re accept the report, but also to refer it to workshop. Madam Chairman, I would make a motion that we uh, accept uh, receipt of the proposed debt management policy and refer it to a workshop. Second. It just helps my Roberts Rules things to do this. I'm doing my best. <laughs> Thank you. Any more discussion on that? Was it seconded? I, just, yeah. Oh, it was seconded. I seconded. Yes. Just very briefly, I wondered if the council had any objection to having this on the discussion with the school board workshop on January 18th, making it clear that it hasn't been approved by the council, but just if they have any thoughts or input on it that they want to present to you before you consider it, because I think it you know, we, at the last council meeting, there was quite a bit of concern about the town's debt and where we stand and, uh, you know, about spending and taxes, and this really ties into an awful lot of that. So I think there's, you know, quite a bit of in interesting information here that uh, the school board might benefit from as well. 
and then ultimately the council will decide thereafter at some point what it wants to do with it. <coughs> no problem. Okay. I no problem. Yeah, I think that's good. That's fine. All those in favor of moving this on to workshop? Opposed? M Madam Chair? Yes. I can I move back to item 67 just for a question of sure. the manager? Sure. Um, we're going to bring this up, I presume, in the regular budget process is where this is going, right? The capital improvement plan? Yeah, yeah. All, particularly all of the uh, projection 2001 right. items that remain as part of the recommended okay. budgets. I just want to understand where it was going. Right. Mm -hmm. right. All of these, I mean, a couple of these are for the budget process uh, time. Item number 69, consideration of report from the Ordinance Committee relating to variant standards and setbacks for non-conforming structures. I would encourage a council here to also refer this to workshop. This is a very complicated issue, and um, I think it's been difficult for the Ordinance Committee to come up with what they need, and, and it's time for us to have some input with them to hear their report. So I would encourage you to also refer this to a workshop. I would so move as a member of the committee. Second. It's been moved and seconded that this item be referred to workshop. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Hearing none. Thank you. We finally got to one that's already been tabled. Of course, I don't know. It well, consideration of a recommendation from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission recommending the use of Fort Williams Park for the annual MS Society Walk scheduled April 9th, 2000. I guess I would ask the manager, um, why was this table before? If you, it was, you'd need a motion for us to take it off the table. Oh, true. Madam Chair, I move that we remove it from the table. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Item number 59 be removed from the table. All those in favor? Opposed, hearing none. Motion carries. Now, discussion, please. Can't remember to, why. to answer your question, it's because it's a, when it was on in November, I thought that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission had him, had approved it when, in fact, they hadn't reviewed it oh, as, okay. as of that date. I couldn't remember why we'd done it. <laughs> and have they approved it's, it? They subsequently so, unanimously yeah. recommended approval. Okay. Madam Chair, I move approval of the uh, request from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission for the annual MS Society walk. Second. second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Yes. Uh, yes. What about insurance, liability insurance? Uh, uh, it's on our application form mm -hmm. that we have for events. All right. And, and they, 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 well, who provides the premium and the policy? The town or the, the organization? There's, there's no premium. We just ask to be, na to be listed as a named insured for the event. Uh, whose policy? On their policy. On their policy. They're listed as a named insured. And, and they provide that as a, I, I'm just uh, concerned about protecting the town, that's all, in case of accident. They provide a certificate of insurance. The certificate they do. All right. All right, no questions. Okay. All those, in, did we vote? All those in favor? <laughs> it's going so fast, I can't remember if we voted. <laughs> Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Did, did we want to take this uh, CMP thing? Do that. You would. That'd be great. Uh, like a matter good to do. Have to spend the, mm -hmm. yes. the rules and all that. Yes, yes. That. Move, yeah, spend the rules. Take it by night. Sure, I move that we suspend the rules so that we can take this um, CMP easement issue out of the Levitt property. I'll say second. Out. It's been moved and seconded to take an item out of order. All those in favor? Thank you. The motion carries. Yes, the, this easement is simply to bring power to the public, to the new public works garage, and the motion would be to approve it and to authorize the town manager to sign the easements on behalf of the town. So, so moved. moved. Second. And, and we authorize. The, as the clerk's little hand has been going as fast as it can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got it. You got it? <laughs> We're authorizing the town manager to execute the document on behalf of the town? That is correct. All right. Is that the motion? Yes. <laughs> seconded? Was it seconded? Yes, seconded. We moved and seconded yes. already. I so <laughs> moved. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we moved and seconded twice, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? No, I just don't know. All those in favor? Opposed? Hearing none. This is great. Not one opposition to anything, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I have a yes. if, unless you want to ask citizens discussion first and then I have a question about the agenda myself is there any citizens uh, of discussion of items not on the agenda <laughs> are you writing out there 
fast? Good. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I have a question regarding the uh, ordinance committee submitted two or sent out two oh, ordinance good. recommendations. Mm -hmm. One was the easement that we sent to workshop. The other one was the tower issue, and I'm wondering what happened to that. I haven't seen the document. I haven't seen the document. Is tower? That's right. Communications. The tower. communications right. tower. What recommendations for the ordinance? Yes. I haven't seen the report yet, or if I've seen it, I, uh, you know, think of course. Is? I don't know. Nobody's got it. I, I mean, I, as chairman of the uh, the ordinance committee, I um, didn't realize that it hadn't been passed on until um, I had gotten into the agenda, and then it was really too late to include in the packet, and, and okay, um, that's what so I think we simply need to included in in next month's packet all right <coughs> that reasonable to everybody yes sure okay yeah. well nothing we can do here i guess i was just I curious what yeah. happened to it because i have a copy of the draft ordinance i don't know if the other councillors got copies of the draft ordinance or not i think it if you look at the it says please forward comments by december 28th i it just never came but but, but they both said that they both yeah, say right. the same thing that's the original note right there mm. right so I don't know. I mean, I know too. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will. We've seen it, so I don't know tonight. Okay. Okay. <coughs> All set. Yeah. Item. Oh, Michael. Go ahead. Yeah, as long as the council's in a mood to take up items out of order, uh, <laughs> it might be in order to officially change the date of the March meeting from uh, Monday oh, yeah. the third, the thirteenth to Monday the fifteenth. A uh, number of uh, two council members and uh, the town clerk uh, plan to. Be attending a National League of Cities meeting. What dates did you say? I think you had the wrong date. Uh, from Monday to Wednesday. From Recent. Monday to Wednesday, the from the 13th Monday. to the 15th. And you that needs to be voted on at a council meeting. And Is there any concern about be wearing the Ides of March? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> concerned. All right. Um, Madam we Chair, were we? I have it that we were scheduled to review the um, municipal budget that night. Has okay. that? We've got some We've other dates on that. We're, we're going to take up okay. some new changes on that. Okay. And we couldn't do that that Monday anyway with two. Three, two, three yeah, people right. missing. So we've had to read. It's been a difficult task, the budget uh, schedule. So now we have an item. I don't know what number we make it, but it's an item to move the regular council meeting from Monday the 10th. To suspend the 13th. rules first in order to oh, take it up. Suspend the out. rules to take it up out of order. Yes, to take it up, not on the agenda. I'll move to suspend the rules to take it up out of order. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we suspend the rules to take an item not listed on the agenda. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? This will be item Thank 71. You. 72. 72. 72, I think, because this will be 71. Right. Yeah. Um, because there will be two counselors away and the clerk away, we're going to like to move, what's the date from the 10th? To, to the Wednesday the 5th, to reschedule the regular meeting in March for Wednesday the 15th. To Wednesday the 15th. So, so moved. moved. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. The regular council meeting be moved to Wednesday, March 15th. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Unopposed. Thank you very much. No. Item number 70. To consider entering executive session to discuss a request for a hardship abatement, issues relating to the upcoming collective bargaining, issues involving land acquisition and disposition, and the annual evaluation of the town manager. Council. <coughs> it's appropriate to make a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that um, council go into executive session. Um, to discuss the items as previ previously stated. At that time, I will caution everybody that there will be no votes taken. However, there is one vote that we will be taking after we get out of executive session. What do we do with the camera? You, it, it involves the request for a hardship abatement, and if anyone wants to find out the results of it, they can call the town office in the morning. It's so we usually don't. don't keep the TV on for that vote. Okay, fine. Thank you. All those in favor? We're going into executive session. Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. This ends the regular part of the town council meeting. Oh, sorry. We do have one item, maybe. Yeah. Um, Rebecca Bowles. I'd just like to bring the attention of the council there that a citizen would like to present a comment or a concern they have. But can they do that? Yes, we, we called twice for it, but we're happy to have it done again. 
He was late. This gentleman here. Is it you? Did, did we did we vote on the executive session? Right up there. Yeah, okay. Yes. May I please come up here and tell us your name? We we are happy to have you comment. <laughs> Um, so my name is Eugene Markowitz. I live over in uh, Broad Cove. And uh, there are two items uh, that uh, occur to me, and I assume, therefore, they're probably uh, for other people. And it was the issue of uh, I work out of town, so I get up early and get home late. And the issue of the uh, town office uh, that I think it would be a, a, a nice idea if it was open either a couple Saturdays a week in the morning or something so that uh, people like myself uh, uh, who don't have a chance during the work week to get in and register vehicles and all the stuff that gets taken care of at the town uh, office, um, you know, it's kind of a luxury to take off work. and. You know, some people would rather do other things with their time than have to take vacation or something or go in late. So, um, you know, it's just, you know, an idea I wanted to put over. <laughs> and um, uh, the other was, uh, once again, uh, the issue of um, the dump. Uh, if even just one day a week we could uh, or once uh, one day a month it could be open on a Sunday uh, and once again it's just for uh, a citizen convenience and uh, uh, making it work you know uh, uh, for the uh, for the citizens of the town uh, recognizing not everybody's able to get there on Saturday or uh, uh, it, you know it's just once again uh, the issue of uh, uh, trying to make the town services more accessible to the to the customers. I mean, because essentially that's what we also are, uh, you know, including yourselves when you go into town, you're, you know, a customer, so. I thank you very much. Uh, this is certainly, you know, we've had this discussion before and we have made several adjustments in various hours. We've tried evenings, we've tried, we've, over the years we have tried several things. And so we are certainly anxious to, to do what we can to make it, uh, for our customers, as you say, for the citizens, and we will continue to look at it. And I appreciate your concerns. Uh, yeah, yes. Mr. Marcos, I'd, two things: we are open at 7:30 in the morning every morning. Plus, we'll also almost any transaction you can do by mail, simply by contacting us in advance. There are there are a few that you might not be able to, but almost everything you can do by mail, other than registering a new car, which is very very complicated, but well, re-registrations, uh, right all, all of that though, can be done. Uh, while we have the changeover with plates, like my plates are January, so that means I've got to figure out when I can come in and take care of that. Uh, you know, it just seems also that somebody, Saturday is not such a busy day, then, you know, somebody would also be able to get some work done too uh, at the office, so hopefully it'll... Thank you very much for coming forward with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, do we need to say that we're going to be in workshop after the executive session? We, yeah, well, I think we could say that after the executive session, town council will be coming, coming back out here. We'll be taking one vote, and then we'll be going into workshop to discuss several letters that we've received regarding the issue of dogs on Crescent Beach, which is an item that the council is presently working on. We will not, however, be on camera. So if you wish to come and listen to us, you'll have to come down to town hall. <laughs> We're also going to discuss when you're going to have that workshop that you referred we, so much to. And we will be scheduling, I suspect, more than one workshop for the items just on this agenda. Uh, Madam Chair, um, may I just make a comment on Mr. Markowitz's um, suggestions? I thought I read somewhere in our packet where we were going to be doing, allowing registration of automobiles over the internet. Mm -hmm. Will that um, afford the opportunity to register new cars as well? We don't know yet. It's we've applied to be a pilot program. The state uh, bureau of motor vehicles a little bit slow in doing it, but most of the activities, you know, particularly re-registration. I'm not sure because it hasn't been developed. But okay. we that's that we are looking uh, very much at continuing to move toward e-commerce and really the ability to do uh, most business, so you never have to come into the town hall. That's the uh, 
on the longer range goal and uh, the council last month approved some new computer technology that will help with that effort as well. Okay, thanks. That, that may be very helpful. Thank you. Is there anything else before we go to executive session? Hearing none, we're now in executive session. 